This season has been the 150th in Gloucester rugby's history. And it's probably been their most bizarre one ever. They've been a real Jacqueline and Hyde team. They've had real success in the cup competitions and a pretty indifferent place and a different time in the league. Um, so in this video, I'm going to look back at the season month by month and try and make an assessment whether this has been a good season for Gloucester or a bad one. Um, and if you're a Gloucester fan, I'd absolutely love to know what you think. So please do get stuck into the comments. So let's start with September. September, brilliant month for them. Five straight wins in the Prem Cup, including wins over Saracens and Harlequins. That good form followed into October with another uh, Prem Cup win, this time over Coventry by one point, but it left Gloucester top of the group and top seeds. In fact, the league form in October was good as well. First two games were won. There was a thriller uh, that was won against Harlequins down at King's Home. And then uh, second win was away to Newcastle. Now, time may, <laughs> may tell that winning away at Newcastle wasn't any great, great shakes this season, but it was still, still a win. It was only in the last game of October that the first defeat was experienced by Gloucester. Saracens came down to Gloucester, um, current champions, and Gloucester started really brightly. They, they were the better team for 20 minutes, but then Zach Mercer got injured, tide seemed to turn, and the game went away from them. Saracens ran out something like 24-3 winners. Now, November was probably the first really bad month that Gloucester had during the season. There were four straight defeats in the Premiership, uh, which included a home defeat by Bath. Uh, I think it was 47-20. And that was off the back of Gloucester looking good and leading 2010 at halftime. So that was a bit of a gut wrencher. And I think that's probably you know, losing to your local rivals in that fashion will be you know, not, not a good experience. Um, now, December was interesting. A bit of a mixed bag. Uh, there were a further three defeats in the Premiership, including uh, taking 50 points uh, down at Bristol. Um, so that left Gloucester with a Premiership record of two wins and seven defeats. So not great, languishing at the bottom there. However, it also December also saw the, saw the start of the Challenge Cup. Now, Potential banana skin to start with. Um, they were drawn, uh, Gloucester were drawn away to Black Lions in Georgia, but Gloucester battled hard and came away with a, a tight, sort of narrow victory there. And then they went on to beat Claremont at home. So, yeah, mixed bag there for December. But January was another good month. Uh, first match of the, the year saw them lose at home. Uh, sorry, I think lose away to Bath. So, Bath did the double over Gloucester, not good. But apart from that, there were three wins in the Challenge Cup. Uh, they beat Castra, they beat uh, Sale, and they also had a really good uh, away victory by one point at Edinburgh. So again, another tight fought game, but Gloucester were getting the better of other teams in those cup competitions. And that win away uh, to Edinburgh saw them topping the Challenge Cup League, uh, which, which is great. You can't do any better than finishing top of your pool. Now, February was when we started to get into the fallow months. Obviously, Six Nations had started. There weren't very many Gloucester players um, involved in the Six Nations. I think it was just Varney for Scotland, sorry, Varney for Italy and Hastings for Scotland, which meant the team could kind of stay together and I guess train together for a sustained period while there were no games. So a little bit of an opportunity to kind of reset and work out how to kind of go forward in the season there. The other thing February bought was the um semi-final of the Prem Cup. Now, home game, obviously top top seeds. They had a home game against Exeter. Got off to a good start. 17-0 lead at halftime. Looked like they were cruising. However, Exeter hit back, came back strongly, and they pulled it back to uh, a three-point game. So it was 17-14 final score. But that meant Gloucester were through to the final of the Prem Cup. And, you know, doesn't matter what competition it is, a final is a final and they're things to be cherished. By the way, if you're enjoying this analysis, um, really appreciate it if you could give it a like or a subscribe. You know, any support I can get for the channel is greatly appreciated. It just helps me reach out to more uh, rugby fans. Then we get into March. So about a month after that victory in the semi-final of the Prem Cup, um, 
Gloucester host Leicester down at King's Home for the final. Now, great atmosphere at the ground. You could really see that coming through. It's palpable, re really bubbly atmosphere down there. Now, Leicester got off to the slightly stronger start. They led 6-3 after a tight first half. But in the second half, Gloucester really turned it on. Crowd really, really got behind them. And they came out 24-13 winners. I think they got a couple of tries. One was from Atkinson. One was from Jordan. Very worthy winners. And you could see the absolute delight in the stadium. The fans were like cock-a-hoop. The players looked just absolutely joyous at that victory. First bit of silverware for something like nine or ten years. And, uh, you know, congratulations. Well done, Gloucester. And off the back of that final win, the following week, Gloucester went up to Leicester and they did them again in the league. Uh, tight game again. Actually, re really good game. Really exciting to watch from a neutral point of view. Uh, they came away narrow winners. And I thought, oh, is this the point where the league form starts to change as well? Um, but... It wasn't to be. I think March ended up with a defeat away to Bristol. So again, another defeat to local rivals, which is uh, never enjoyable, is it, uh, as, as a fan of a club? Uh, but then we got into April. Now, April was a, a, a mixed bag, but I would say primarily a good month. Whilst there were league defeats for uh, away to Saracens and I think at home to Exeter, um, the Challenge Cup campaign kept motoring on. So there was a round of 16 win against Castra and then followed by a quarter-final victory over Ospreys. And that Ospreys game really brought back for me the old feeling of the Anglo-Welsh Cup. There was a really nice rivalry between those two clubs. Uh, and yeah, it was a you know great, great outcome into the semi-final of a Challenge Cup. Then we get into May. So this is probably the most mixed month from a Gloucester point of view. Started very well. They um, they hosted uh, Benetton uh, in the semi-final down at King's Home. Now, Benetton were very game in that match. They really went for it. They were fully loaded with all of their Six Nation stars. And, and again, great game. But you know, Gloucester were the better side. You could see it throughout. They were the better side. And as time went on, they just started to pull away and away and away from Benetton and ran out sort of deservedly, uh, deserved winners there. So into the final of the uh, Challenge Cup. But from a league point of view, they've got an away game at Northampton. Now, Northampton have been cutting up the Premiership this season. Their attack has been fast, fluid, frightening at times. And uh, yeah, and this this is this is the low point of the season. This is a an embarrassing, humbling, humiliating defeat. Ninety points to nil. I mean, ninety points to nil should just not be happening in any uh, top class league within any of the the nations of of rugby. You know, there should not be that level of golf between two teams in the same league. Same can be said for the. Uh, Terrible defeat that Newcastle took at Bristol, 84-12 or whatever it was. You know, we shouldn't be seeing scores of that magnitude. So very humbling day for Gloucester. Obviously, fans not happy, completely understand that. Yeah, it wasn't as if Gloucester sent a complete bunch of uh, academy lads up there. There was a real mix of uh, players in that team. Certainly all the stars weren't there by any means, but there were internationals in that team. Um you know, not with massive amount of caps, but you had Varney there, Cicinho, um, Albert Tuasui, and also Ludlow was there as well. So captain was playing. So yeah, horrible, kind of jarring defeat, really. Um, one one th or two things I'd say off the back of that defeat. First of all, I thought Skivington spoke really well after the game, completely accepted kind of responsibility, accepted what had happened, remained calm. Because uh, there's still a lot to play for this season uh, from a Gloucester point of view. And also, I really like what Ludlow did in uh, terms of that Twitter message, appealing to fans, you know, apologising for a you know, performance that wasn't worthy of the jersey, and then encouraging fans to stick with them because there's a couple of big games to go still. Well, obviously, there's one big game to go still. So I like that about uh, that outcome from that kind of horrendous defeat. So as it stands... Uh, Gloucester have two games left this season. First one is against Newcastle at home. So nothing riding on that game except pride. Newcastle from the point of view of 
They're seventeen zero this season, and they are not going to want to go down having not won any games this season. And then from a Gloucester point of view, there's going to be a lot of pride where they're going to want to just put some smiles back on Gloucester fans' faces. You know, actually have a decent last home league game. So it will be interesting to see how that one pans out because obviously. That league game is one thing, but there's going to be an one eye on that final game of the season, which is that Challenge Cup final at Tottenham. I think it's uh, the penultimate weekend in May, playing the South African World Cup winning star-studded team of the Sharks. Now, Sharks have got some great players in that team, you know, in the forwards, in the backs, and on paper look pretty formidable. However, the bookies might have them as favourites, but you know they, they struggled to dispatch uh, Claremont when they played them at the Stoop in the semi-final. And I do wonder whether there might just have been a bit too much air travel uh, for the Sharks over the last few weeks, and that could really play into the hands of Gloucester. So lots to play for this season still. So whilst many people are kind of summing up the Gloucester season as not good, or you know, even hear some people say, no, it's been a disaster. I fundamentally disagree with that. Um, you know, it's it's had its ups and downs, it's been one hell of a roller coaster, and you know, there's been a few things for Gloucester to contend with as well. You know, there's been some disappointments uh, and, and disruptions along the way. You know, you've had things like Mark Atkinson having to retire off the back of his uh uh injury. You also had had uh, Reese Samet suddenly disappearing to go and play NFL, um, and then there's been some major injuries to other significant players. So Mercer was out for a while. McGuigan's been out since uh, March, and um, uh, Valapala Ruskin's been out for a while as well. Um, and then there's also been news of some senior players who are choosing not to carry on with Gloucester next season. Now, whether that's down to the players or whether down to the club, I don't know. But you've got likes of May leaving. Hastings leaving and Cicino leaving. So, you know, you can understand why things have ebbed and flowed a little bit this season. However, you know, I think it has been a really, really positive season. And I'll give you a number of reasons why. First reason is just from a win percentage point of view. So of all the games Gloucester have been involved in so far, they've won 21 and they've lost 13. If you compare that to the current Premiership champion Saracens, They've won 15 games and lost 12. And you talk about Bath, look at those local rivals across all of their fixtures this season. They've won 16 and lost 11. So actually, the win percentage of Gloucester is better than both of those clubs. And I'm not hearing anybody saying Saracens are having a disastrous season or Bath are having a disastrous season. Almost the opposite from a Bath point of view. Um, The other thing is, Silverware, silverware for the first time since 2015. That that is that is significant, and you know people say oh it was the Prem Cup, but teams can only play in three competitions in any one season. So they've Gloucester have won one of those competitions, and are in the final of another one. So if they come away with two bits of silverware this season, I think that is magnificent. I think the other thing that has been great is the form of some players. I think Zach Mercer. You know, signed at the start of the season uh, from Montpellier has been a revelation. He brings something different from any other number eight in the uh, in the country. You know his ability to attack is great, and and also just that constant go forward he gives is is, is really good. And that coupled with uh, you know some of the younger players really starting to come through and sort of stamp themselves as as class acts. So you know there's a couple of players who got picked up when. Uh, Clubs like London Irish and Worcester went down. So the likes of um, Englefield, what a great scrum half he's been. Probably got the biggest boot of the scrum halves in the the whole league. Um, And also Seb Atkinson. I've really enjoyed his play in the centre. I thought he's done really well. And then there's some great actual academy players coming through as well. So two that I would call out specifically. I think Seb Blake at Hooker has been really good. His set piece has been good. Around the field has been good. And he's just been a real presence, you know, playing, you know, above and beyond his his, his kind of age, as has Josh, Josh Hathaway, you know, coming in at fullback. He's looked the real deal, you know, got some real pace, scored seven tries, got a hat-trick away at Saracens. 
And he has some real opportunism in there as well in those tries. And then I think he's beaten 18 defenders and had 15 clean clean breaks. So it might be the other way around. But, you know, impressive stats from such a young lad. And then the other thing I think that's happened that's been really good during this season is the recruitment for next season. There's some real quality coming in and some real experience. And that blend of quality and experience put alongside the young lads, I think will work really well. So Gareth Ainscombe is coming in. So from a fly half point of view, also joined by a fellow Welsh uh, international, uh, Thomas Williams, who I think is an absolutely outstanding scrum half. Um, So, you know, I think he'll make a real difference there. And then also the try machine, Christian Wade is coming. Um, You know, he obviously went off to NFL a few years ago. Didn't quite pan out for him. Um, but, you know, if he gets flying, that that is going to be some serious points being scored out on the wing. So I think all of that is fantastic. Um, so I reflect on this and say, irrespective of what happens in that Challenge Cup final, this has been a good season for uh, Gloucester. One that's probably underappreciated by most. Um, whether or not it's underappreciated by the actual fans at King's Home, I'm not sure. and would love to hear people's views. But I thought it was great to see the club really back uh, Skivington off the back of that horrible defeat at Northampton and say, you know, he is our man for the future because I think he is a great coach and I think there's great things happening at Gloucester, albeit inconsistent. Um, But yeah, so I think good things are going to be coming in the 24-25 season as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.